Hey everybody, today we're getting started on confidence intervals. Throughout this conversation, we're going to have to bear in mind the distinction between a parameter and a statistic. So let's review it really fast. A parameter is a number that describes a population, like the average starting salary of all data scientists in the United States, while a statistic is a number that describes a sample, like the average starting salary of 10 randomly selected data scientists in the United States. Now, we're generally not able to observe parameters directly. Usually we can't gather information from an entire population. All we can get is sample data, a statistic. Statistical inference is the process of reasoning from a statistic to a parameter. The most fundamental form of statistical inference, and arguably the most important, is the confidence interval. Let's make all of this a little more concrete by having an example in mind. Suppose we sample 10 data scientists at random in the United States and find that their mean starting salary is $97,000. This is a statistic since it refers only to some of the data scientists in the United States. We'd like to say something about the mean starting salary of all data scientists in the United States. I'm say something about that parameter. Tiny bit of notation here. I've used X bar to refer to the sample mean and the Greek letter mu to refer to the population mean. This is pretty standard notation, um, where the Greek letter is used for the parameter. Now, obviously, we're going to want to estimate the parameter mu with the statistic x bar. In other words, our best guess is that the mean starting salary of all data scientists in the United States is $97,000. Otherwise, why did we bother collecting that sample data at all if we're not going to use it? The trouble is that that guess is almost certainly wrong. The parameter mu is unlikely to be exactly $97,000. might be a tiny bit higher or a tiny bit lower. Potentially it could be a lot higher or a lot lower. So given that that estimate of $97,000 isn't going to be exactly right, we should give an interval estimate. An estimate of the form x bar plus or minus some margin of error. The big question is, how exactly do we go about finding that margin of error? One thing that we need to bear in mind as we go through that construction, even if we start with a very large margin of error, there's always going to be a probability that we could be wrong. For instance, what if we just happen to get a sample with 10 very underpaid data scientists? And the actual parameter, the actual starting salary of data scientists in the United States was $150,000. Our sample mean again was 97,000. So the best that we can really hope for is to make an interval estimate that is probably right. It should capture the true parameter a high percentage of the time. Now we are going to have to decide what we mean by a high percentage of the time. The most standard is to use 95% of the time. Sometimes you'll see 90% or 99% in different applications. Um, in any case, the notation will be a capital C for that level of confidence. Let's write this all a little more formally as a probability statement. We want to find a margin of error E such that the probability that x bar and mu are within E of each other is C. Um, written in symbols, P of the absolute value x bar minus mu is less than E equals C. Let's get a little more specific with our example. Suppose that the starting salaries of data scientists are known to be normally distributed with standard deviation $8,000. That's a population standard deviation, by the way. The, starting, uh, the distribution of starting salaries has a bell shape. It looks something like what I've pictured here. Now, we know the standard deviation, but not the mean. So I've centered this graph at $97,000 but let's bear in mind it could actually be shifted a little to the left or right. Our goal here is to find a margin of error, capital E, so that mu lies within E of x bar, $97,000, let's say 95% of the time. Let's choose that as our confidence level. All right, we need some information about um, sample means and sample standard deviations. If we have a random normal variable, sorry, if we have a random variable x, that has a normal distribution, 
then the sampling mean x bar is also going to be normal. And the mean of that sample mean is going to be the same as the mean of the distribution mu. However, there's going to be less spread. The standard deviation of that sampling mean is going to be the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. What this is saying in our present example is that the mean sal salary in a sample of 10 data scientists, that sample mean, could be a little bit below the national average or a little bit above. But if we take those samples of size 10 many, many, many times, on average, we'll get exactly the population mean. Similarly, if we look at the spread of those sample means over many, many different samples, um, we're going to get less spread there than we would if we were looking at individually selected data scientists from this distribution. Let's have a picture. Here I have drawn two bell curves. The first for individuals in this population, that's in red. Um, it's got a fair amount of spread. It's a pretty wide bell curve. In blue, I'm showing sample means. So go out, sample 10 um, randomly selected data scientists and take their mean starting salary. Do it again, again, and again. The center of that bell curve is going to be exactly the same as the center of the bell curve for individuals in that population. But the bell curve is going to have a much lower standard deviation, much less spread. There's going to be less variability in that sample mean. Because when I go and get 10 data scientists at random, it's likely that the high salaries in that sample will be balanced out by low salaries and vice versa. Since the distribution of x bar is normal with mean mu and standard deviation sigma over root n, we're able to unpack the previous probability statement that we made. P of the absolute value x bar minus mu less than e equals c. First of all, let's do away with that absolute value. If the absolute value of something is less than a number, that means that that something has to be less than the number and greater than negative the number. Adding mu to both sides of that inequality, we get that the probability of mu minus e less than x bar less than mu plus e equals c. So x bar we know has a normal distribution. We're going to interpret probability in that distribution as area under a bell curve, like I've pictured here. We want the area to be the confidence level C, in this case, 95%. So we need to find values of E, E on the right, negative E on the left, that are going to give us that area C under that normal distribution curve. When talking about normal distributions, we always measure position in terms of z-scores, number of standard deviations that a value lies away from the mean. So let's do that with E here. We're going to look at the standard normal distribution, n of 0, 1, keep area equals c, and try and find a z-score so that we get area c between negative z star and z star. We can do this using technology. Um, however, because there's only a few really standard values of c, uh, it's sufficient to have a table here. For example, when c is 0.95, the z star here is going to be 1.960. Now we know the width of the interval we need in terms of z star, the number of standard deviations that we should go above and below the mean. To get a margin of error, we just need to multiply that by the standard deviation of the sample mean. So our margin of error should be z star sigma over the square root of n. Overall, our interval estimate for the population mean mu should be x bar plus or minus z star sigma over the square root of n x bar is the sample mean, and z star sigma over root n is going to be the margin of error, a certain number of standard deviations of the sample mean. We call this a level c confidence interval for the population mean, where c is describing the probability that the interval actually includes the true parameter mu. In other words, we expect this um, confidence interval to be correct c percent of the time, roughly speaking. Let's continue with our example. We have a sample of n equals 10 data scientists, and their mean starting salary was $97,000. Sample mean. We also know that sigma is $8,000, population standard deviation. Let's create a level 95% confidence interval for mu. 
Here's the general form of our confidence interval. All we have to do is plug in. We take out X bar and put in $97,000. The Z score corresponding to that um, level of confidence, C equals point, pardon me, C equals 0.95 is going to be z star equals 1.960. And then sigma over root n is going to be $8,000 over the square root of 10. Simplifying all of that, we get $97,000 plus or minus 4,958. Roughly speaking, we expect that the mean starting salary of all data scientists in the United States will be between $92,042 and $101,958. Roughly speaking, we expect that we'll be right 95% of the time that we go back and create such an interval using sample data.